Hi there, hi there. This is the Tekimaki channel. Uh, in the last video, we were talking about how to design an order taking system. And then we started to think about what would be the components, right? The high level components that would be part of the solution. We uh, ended up getting customer orders, menu and payments. And now we're going to go even further and start to think about what is the data model that we need? Uh, uh, what are the entities that we need as part of these big components, right, in order to uh, serve orders for customers and uh, receive payments, okay? So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. It's going to be called classes.puml. And here in this file, we're going to define the same thing using client UML. So we start UML and uh, end UML. And here we're going to define again uh, a name, order taken, classes. Great. Now let's think about from a data structure perspective. It's different from actually thinking about components. It's a good exercise for you to think of how the persistence also is going to be, right? And what are the main functions, right? The main methods that your solution is going to have. So the first thing that we are going to think about is the order class, right? So let's think about the order. And at this moment, you're going to see that I didn't put that on the plural. I've, I've, I've put that in uh, singular because we're thinking about the order entity. Okay. So the first information that we have about an order is definitely order ID, right? Uh, the order ID of this order. And let's define it, right? Actually, a uh, it is a very interesting type of structure because basically you can uh, interchange and in, you can you can share this unique identification between different services. We're going to see that as we move along with services mindset, and then you can guarantee uniqueness, right? So that's a good way for you to share that same uh, order ID between different systems and services, and you can still keep the integrity. Of course, that it's possible to have collisions, but uh, this is something that we're not going to cover in this video. So then second thing about an order is, uh, of course, how much you pay, right? So you need to think about the total amount of your order, and let's put it as a decimal. Right. Uh, as we as we do this here, we can see automatically uh, the plant UML preview changing as we go. So the third thing that is important about an order is how much you pay in terms of taxes. Right. You need to pay taxes for every order that you actually take. Many countries, they really expose the tax uh, together with your receipt. So it's important to actually have that information linked to it. So basically is your total tax. So let's use as well as the decimal because we're talking about money. Now thinking about the order, uh, we're going to have a total amount and a total tax of something. Usually when you are in a restaurant or in an e-commerce platform, uh, your order is not composed by a single product. It is usually composed by one or more products, one or more items on the menu for example. So in that case, we need to define a structure that allow us to define items inside of an order. So let's define this structure. We're going to call it order items. So order items is going to be a list of order items. So this structure is actually a new one. Uh, if you think about the components, right, we were defining the high level components of the system, and we were not in, uh, getting into the detail of the entities. And this is an entity that is part of the orders component, but basically it's a specific structure and a specific entity because we need to actually persist that data and we need to keep that structure when we talk about orders. This is a common characteristic of an order, right? So let's define this class. So order item order item class. And uh, what are the type of data that we're going to have in an order? The first thing is definitely the order order item ID, right? We need to define a unique identification for this order item ID. So now let's think about what is inside the order item. It is the price. We need to define the price of that. And as it's something related to money, we need to define that the type is actually decimal. This item is of a certain type and the type is actually defined in the menu and we are going to get there. But even before that, usually when you are, let's say that you're buying one book, you may choose to buy not only one book, right? You may buy two of the same book. So in this case, you are going to define what is the quantity of that order item. 
and it's an integer. So, okay, so these are the basic things that you define. Let's see what else, right? I think also, oh, that's a very important one. We need to define as well what is the tax for the individual item. It's a very common way of order taking domain to call the price of uh, one specific item as unit price. And then, other than this, we can uh, define the total tax, right? We can say total tax, and it's going to be a decimal as well. And we can say unit tax. So what is the tax that is on top of that specific unit? But hold on. In this case, we are defining a lot of properties, but I understand that some or the majority of these properties here, they are not like a raw data. Some of them are generated via calculation. So for example, total amount, right? Total amount is the sum of prices of all the items inside of an order. Of course, that we can also define that as properties that are not like they do not have a setter, they only have a getter, and so they return a calculated value. That's also okay. I just wanted to make it clear here inside of this class diagram that these data are actually uh, calculated. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, one way to do is to change that instead of being a property definition, it can be a method definition. So we can say decimal total amount. And then that's it, right? So then we can even remove that. And if you look at the diagram here, you're going to see that it now will show up after we put the parentheses. You can see that it goes uh, to another section that is the method section. So total amount is going to be calculated and is actually in the method section. Let's say the same thing, right? We also want to calculate the total tax. That is pretty much the sum of all the total taxes of all the items inside of an order. As well, it's going to be a method. Uh, same thing for the order item. We have like the total price and we have the total tax. So this two information can be transformed into uh, two methods. So let's do the same thing. So decimal total tax and let's do decimal total price. So that's that simplifies a little bit and makes the class visualization a little bit more interesting in terms of uh, what are really the data that we need stored and what are the data that we're going to calculate. Okay. So great. So in this case, we are just talking about the orders component, but there is much more, right? We haven't yet started to establish some relationship. And here is where there's actually a very good way to express relationships in uh, the class diagram when you think about UML. So for example, if you want to establish a relationship that is really a direct relationship. So for example, there is no point in having ordered item if you don't have an order because uh, it's really interwined. It's, it's really like uh, one thing cannot live without the other. And in these cases, what we use to establish this relationship or to actually uh, make it visible in the class diagram is by using composition linking. So we link with a certain visual reference here that is called composition. Okay, so let's do that for the order and ordered item. I'm going to actually uh, call order and then order has composition. This is the asterisk uh, means composition. And then we're going to put order item over here. And that's the way that it does to establish this relationship. So this symbol over here is the composition. So this is how you define this composition. It's also interesting to, to inform that this relationship is one to many, right? So you have one order and then you have many order items. So usually you do that by creating like uh, double quotes here, double quotes to open, double quotes to close. And then you put inside of it, what is the relationship? It's a uh, one to N relationship. Okay. Okay. So now we've finished the order structure. So let's think about the menu component and uh, what are the entities that menu actually has, right? The first very important component that menu has is the product. The product is basically the structure that defines all the items in a menu. So we, we can call it product class. And this product class contains all the the menu, all the catalog of items that are available for the customer to request, right? So the customer goes to a restaurant, for example, in, and then he sees over there, we have like this three, four, five di different types of sandwiches and also different types of soda. He can pick and choose each of them. 
add these items to the order, pay at the counter, either take it home or eat in, in the restaurant. In this video, we are actually designing what is like a very common order taking type of structure. But in real scenarios, right, when you are designing a system, you need to engage the product owner and the specialists during the whole process. You need to understand and capture what are the names that they use? What is the common language that is actually clear for everybody? So getting back to our use case here, let's continue with the product. So the product has a product ID and it also has what is the product name, right? We need to define a name for the product. It's gonna be a string. So um, other than this, we need to define, for example, what is the price of that product? So let's define that as the price, and the price is basically a decimal as well. So here is the question. Why are we defining the unit price over here if we are also defining that over here? When you think about designing components that have some sort of independence, it may be a good practice to separate, even duplicate, information in two different places. So the same information would be okay to be stored in two different entities. Uh, for now, let's leave it this way because I'm going to actually show how this is going to be beneficial for us in the future. So continuing here, I'm going to define the price and what else? Let's think about the text as well. And finally, we're going to define the image path, right? So it's the path actually to an image that's going to be stored in the server and uh, that we're going to use to know exactly on our system uh, what is the image to display uh, for that specific product. So now let's go to the relationship. What is the relationship between the order and the order item? in the product. So in this case, there is a very clear relationship between the order item and the product, which we're going to first define in the order item structure. So we need to define what is the product ID for that specific order item. And this kind of establishes the basic relationship. Now we are going to define also as well, and let me just make it a little. Okay, that's great. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, that's fine. So then uh, we actually have a relationship between the order item and the product, but we haven't been able to define that here uh, yet, right? And this is not like a composition relationship. So what is it? When you think about relationships that are not like a composition, you are, you, because for example, if you have 10 products and you haven't applied them to any order item, that's okay, that's not a problem, right? The product can live without the order items. It's just a relationship between these two entities. When we talk about this type of a relationship, it's actually an aggregate. So finally, let's add the order item here and uh, use lowercase o to define the aggregate. Okay, so now let's continue the definition, right? We're going to define now the payment class. The payment class basically will contain the payment ID. We also need to define what is the payment status. The payment status is actually going to be an enumerable. So let's say enum payment status. Okay. In the payment status, we're going to define, for example, in progress paid, so on and so forth. We also need to define what is the payment type, which is also an enum. The payment type can be, for example, a credit card payment, can be cash. We also need to define the latest update of the payment. Also, we need to define what is the amount that was paid. Here, we're not going to record any user data in regards to payment. We're not going to record like credit card information or anything related to the credit card. But we need to define an important information when we talk about the payment class, right? And what is it? We need to define the action pay. 
And inside of the action pay, yes, we need to define the basic data. So we have like the name, name on card. We have, for example, credit card number. Right? We have also uh, the security code. And finally, we have the expiration date. Okay, so basically this is all for payment. Let's think about now that uh, we also need, when we talk about payment, we definitely need an information about what is the order, right? So what is the what is the order related to that specific payment? And when we do that, it's also important to define another aggregate. Let's go for payment, and then we go on the payment, all lowercase, and establish a relationship with order, okay? So this is going to reflect uh, soon in the diagram. So let's define now the customer class. So for the customer, what we have is we have the customer ID. We need to know the name of the customer, the address. And here is a very interesting situation. When we talk about the address, address actually is a complex type. It contains street information. It contains the number of the house. It contains also many other information that are relevant and that makes sense to be defined as a specific class. So let's define this specific address class. Okay, class address, the street uh, line one, right? And uh, also the street line two, zip code. Zip code is also going to be a specific complex object. We also need to define city. City is going to be an enum. And finally, state. Let's define the zip class. It contains a code. So now let's define as well the enumerables for the city and the enumerables for state. All of these new classes have brought many relationships that we haven't yet defined. It. So let's define these relationships here. So for customer, there is a relationship between order and the customer. It's again an aggregate relationship. It's also important to go back to the order and define that, right? Because we need to have the customer here. Customer ID needs to be part of the order object because that's the way that we link the order and the customer. Let's continue then to define some uh, relationships. Uh, there are missing associations from this diagram. So one of the associations that we are missing here is the one between customer and address. This relationship is a composition relationship because you cannot have an address without a customer. Continuing on the same thread, there is a relationship between the address and city, address and zip, address and state. We also have a relationship with payment that are not listed here. So payment also has another composition relationship with payment type. And finally, payment with payment status. All right, so we have just finished the creation of the first version of our class diagram. Of course, that this is going to pass through many, many iterations. And as soon as we learn more and more about the system, this is going to evolve dramatically, right? But this is a very good thing to have in order to be able to start your development because then you have the visualization, the initial understanding of the entities of your solution. In the next video, we're going to create a first sequence diagram and we're going to see the relationship between all of these entities and especially all of these components. If you want me to design and implement another use case, just put on the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and also to click on the notification buttons in order to be notified when a new video is published. Thanks a lot for joining and see you soon on the next video.